So what we got here is a refractometer. It's sort of um, a portable microscope uh, that we use to um, determine the moisture content of the honey that we've harvested from our bees. Honey is nectar that has been evaporated down to about 17 or 18, 19 percent moisture uh, because nectar is pretty much like water when the bees bring it in and they have to evaporate it down to a, the thickness of what we would normally think of as honey. And once it's down to that 17 percent range of, of moisture, it, they cap it. They put a wax capping over the, the cell that holds the, the nectar or the honey and they're done. It's, they're all, it's all done and usually you don't even need a refractometer like this to determine if the nectar has been ripened or cured down to honey consistency because if they've capped it then then it's honey and sometimes you can still harvest uncapped honey but one way to determine if it's um, honey and not just nectar is you flip the frame upside down and give it a shake and if anything drips out uh, you've got nectar in there. Uh, nectar is still watery and it'll fly out of the frame no problem. But if it's fully cured honey, it'll just stick right into the frame and it won't drip at all. And usually that's what I do. You can still get a refractometer because it's, I guess it's the quickest, well, yeah, I guess it's the safest way of determining whether it actually is honey. And if you're selling honey to the public, then it's, I guess it's a good thing to do. But anyhow, this is a, the cheap knockoff version. These things don't come with the greatest instructions. Um, they've got all kinds of languages written on them, on the box and stuff. And I've got a bunch of instructions here that are just crammed into the box and they don't tell me anything. They've got this stuff, one of these little things. It's for, I guess, you know, soup, you know, uh, sucking up your honey or whatever. It's got a little chamois. For, I guess for cleaning the thing, and uh, and it had, came with a, in a little velvet bag, uh, just because everything kind of has to come in a little velvet bag these days. Most refractometers will come with a small screwdriver like this, even the cheap ones, and the screwdriver goes right here into this little screw, right above the whatever the top of the refractometer, and that this screw is used to calibrate the sensitivity of the refractometer. So if the reading is wrong or off in any way, you can use this little screwdriver to just, you know, fine tune it. But in order to accurately calibrate it, we need to put some sort of liquid that has a known moisture content. And then you put it in and you, you get a reading. And if it matches the known moisture content of that substance, then you know you've got an accurate reading. And if not, you just go in here and you, you, you'll just, you adjust it with the screw until it, it, until it matches what you know that moisture content is supposed to be. Some refractometers come with a little bottle of fluid called calibration fluid. And it, this, this one says bricks 65% plus or minus 0.1. So if you get a 65% bricks reading, I still don't know what bricks means then you've, you've got an accurate reading. So let's see if this works. Just loop a little bit on there, like so. Here it is. And I'm just gonna go doo -doo. I don't know how much to put on, just put a whole bunch on. I'm just gonna rub it around. I'm gonna squish this thing down, see that? And now I'm gonna get a reading. Now the, the reading that I got off this is not 65, but maybe it's because I didn't put enough on. And if you look right here, it's hard, it might be hard to pick this up on the camera, but you can see that you got to squish this thing down. And if, there's, if, and if there's any, there can't be any bubbles or anything like that. It, it needs to be perfectly flat. Well, that was really interesting. Um, I don't know if you can see this. There it is. It's dead on. It's dead on 65% right now. And while I was looking through it, I moved this screw and I just screwed it. I just, I think I turned it to the left until it went up to 
and now it says 65 percent let's see if i can get it let's see if i can get a good picture of this all right so i just i just got a shot of that with my cell phone and i think it works so um I'll be honest, I had this stuff before uh, with another uh, refractometer and I just got this stuff today. Um, and the stuff, the, the refractometer calibration fluid that came with my other refractometer was not accurate in any way. Uh, it was completely useless. This stuff actually seems to be dead on the money. Well, I don't know if it's dead on the money. We're going to find out. Now because this calibration fluid is inconsistent or in some cases not even included in the package for the refractometer you got to use something else to see if you're getting an accurate reading so apparently extra virgin olive oil is the way to go you put a bit of extra virgin olive oil on it and if you get a bricks rating of 71.5 percent or in that ballpark you're, you're cooking <clears throat> There it is. There we go. I think more is better than less, so I'm just going to squish it on and make sure there's no bubbles in it. It's pretty hard to do that, actually. There we go. I think that's it. All right, let's take a look. This one is 72%. Okay, I got exactly 72%, <clears throat> and I think it's supposed to be 71.1, but I'm not sure. I'll double check that. Okay, so the final test is to use some actual honey. Boop, here's the thing. Here comes the honey. Boom. Plop this thing down. Give it a squish. Make sure there's no bubbles in there. Take a look. So that's coming in at just under 17%, and I know that's not accurate. I know this honey is not that viscous. I'm going to take the screwdriver and adjust it right now. So there it is. I just adjusted it to seven, exactly 17%. That's it. So I've calibrated it. Um, I've sort of cheated a bit because I knew before I even did this test that this honey was 17% uh, moisture. So, and, and it was giving me a slightly less, a lower reading than that. So that's what I did. So I'm really curious about this. So I'm gonna try to, um, I'm gonna do this again because I, I just looked up the exact percentage of water that's supposed to be in the extra virgin olive oil and it's supposed to be 71.5% on the brick scale. So I'm going to drop a little bit more into it and do it one more time just to make sure that that's exactly what we've got here. So here we go. Actually that looks pretty good. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's slightly over 71%. So this is some honey that I'm pretty sure isn't fully cured and I don't really care because it's still pretty tasty. But let's just see. There we go. Dead on 18. There it is right there. So come on, get in there. There we go. 18%. A little over 18%. So that's still with well within the range of acceptable honey. So this thing's working. I know that this honey definitely had wasn't fully cured. It was I even when I was extracting it, I could see some nectar floating around and all that jazz. And it's only 1% more water content than my fully cured honey. So pretty good. That's close enough for me. So I started off with the calibration fluid that's supposed to be 65% bricks. So then I went to the olive oil and I got a 71.5% bricks rating. And then I put in some fully cured honey and I got a 17% moisture content rating, not the bricks one. 
and then I put in some honey that I knew had a little bit of extra nectar in it and it had 18% moisture content so makes sense so anyway I still think I'm pretty much in the ballpark here um, what I'm surprised by is the fact that uh, the honey that I thought wasn't fully cured is actually pretty cured good to know Unless, of course, this is a hunk of junk and it's not giving me any kind of accurate reading at all. But I still think it's pretty much in the ballpark. And as long as I can get that number down to, say, 18%, 17% for sure, I think we're good.